Hey everyone, I'm Norn Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Arizona. This is where I'm currently living. It's really awesome and really warm. And while I was gone, uh, which was a, a bit troubling, I discovered that uh, I missed quite a bit in the 40k community. I don't know what happened, just everything got dumped on me at once. But we have the brand new box set, the Indomitus box. Now this is going to be a limited edition box set uh, from Games Workshop, similar to that of the Sister Battle Box. So expect it to be ridiculously expensive online. Like ridiculously expensive. Like people are going to scalp these things and sell them on eBay for like quadruple the amount. And then these models aren't going to become available until like three months later. So expect all of that goodness that we saw with the Adeptus Sororitas box. That being said, I'm going to try to get at least one or two of them so that I can give out the core rulebook as a giveaway. So the Indominus box, we have the brand new Indominus Marines or whatever they're called, the Primaris Marines, the Primaris Assault Marines. I think this is the Lieutenant on the front of it, which looks absolutely incredible. I love this new helmet. It kind of has a football player feel to it, but at the same time a knight. So it kind of looks a little bit ridiculous and a little bit funny, but at the same time looks really nice and I really like it. So it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of, it's there. Okay, so I'm not going to read too much into this. I'm going to try to blow through this as quickly as I can to get through all of this. So let's get right into it. The Indominus box. Oh, this might be really loud for you guys. So we get to see all of the new Marines here, which I think look absolutely incredible. All the new Necrons, the brand new Necrons look, oh my God, do they look crazy good. The new Captain looks incredible. The Necrons actually look like zombie robots, which I really like. The Executioner looks really good. Brand new Scarabs, dude with double dual disc. Just look at these incredible miniatures. I'm not really sold on him. But yes, please, all of this. Yes, just yes to all of this. All right, so let's dive in and see what's actually in the box. Now, I have actually seen pretty much everything that was in this box set, but just in case, let's take a look. And let me give you my honest opinions on all of this stuff. It, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Warhammer 40k with their police logo. Probably not the best time to come out with that. The hour has never been darker. Amidst our broken Imperium, ancient horrors rise to steal what remains of the Emperor's light. Yet, hope remains. Our Primarch has returned to us. Through him, we are reborn, blessed with the strength to endure. And in enduring, we prevail. We are the Ultramarines. We are the Slayers of Kings. None shall stay our wrath. Alright, I'm digging that. I love Kano the Chaplain. Like he looks incredible. The Executioner looks a bit silly. But yes, to all of this. Alright. So that was that. But let's take a look at some of these badass marines. First off, I love that his helmet flips up. I think that's incredible and I really, 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 really like that aesthetic. But I'm going to change that hat because it looks a little bit silly on a, on a, well, somebody like him. So I am going to switch that up and I'm hoping space marine captains get a bit more options. Because right here, we actually see that he has a power sword and storm shield. Uh, at least, I believe this to be a storm shield. It might be something a little bit different. It might be like an Indominus shield or some silly thing like that. Uh, you've always wanted to play Primaris Captain Kid out for close combat. Yeah, kind of wanted him with a thunder hammer, not gonna lie. And a jump pack. Then the God Emperor clearly heard your prayers. Yeah, he kind of. Uh, ba 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 Mastercrafted Power Sword and Relic Shield. Interesting. See, it's not a Storm Shield, it's a Relic Shield. 
It has the old Marines on them. See? Mark one. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the new lieutenant. Now, I'm wondering what... Is that a Volkite? That's been bugging me this whole time. Because he has a sword, shield, and Volkite. Does this guy have a pistol? I'm really hoping he has a pistol. I'm hoping for a heavy bolt pistol or something that we can change out. But just in case, let's see. Da, 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 da. Primaris Lieutenant is awesome and prayers for those blah, 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 blah. He's armed with a mastercrafted power sword, a storm shield, so it is a storm shield. Uh, no dead imperial shield martyr for you until you get promoted, laddie. I love that. Uh, he's got a Neo Volkite pistol, so a new Volkite pistol. That's really, really cool. So they're remaking Volkite weapons. So Gilliman is not taking any chances. He is definitely diving into the 30k lore and diving into the older uh, weaponry to bring you some more badass weapons from yesteryear. So I'm really hoping that we see destroyer squads again. That would be really cool. Especially now that they're not just purging Imperials like they were in uh, 30k, which is why uh, Gilliman wanted to do away with them because he saw them as attacking humans and he didn't like it too much. And even Xenos were being destroyed and the planets were becoming irradiated. But now we might actually see destroyer squads, which would be really, really cool. The new chaplain, Kano, looks amazing. His heavy bolt pistol and his Crozius Arcanum looks incredible. He doesn't look as cheesy as the other uh, Primaris uh, chaplain that came out. So I'm really happy with how he looks. The executioner, I think this guy is the Judicator. And he's here to tell you that your time is up. I literally think that he is carrying that strictly for that reason. Or he goes, you know what time it is? Chop time. I, I don't know. That was, that was the best of my joke right there. I'm not too sold on this model. I think it looks good, but looks a little bit silly. Um, I do like the, the sword now that I get to actually see it. Uh, I think it's really cool. I do like the glove over the armor aesthetic. I'm liking that more and more now that I'm seeing that out of Sisters of Battle. Because you do see that on uh, these guys as well. Like the, It almost looks like the glove uh, over the Grievous or Greaves. So it's chopping time. Yep, I knew it. I knew that was going to be there. I knew that was going to be there. Um able to cut down foes in a single blow of his brutal looking executioner relic blade so again Gilliman diving into those relics now we did hear about this in earlier books where Gilliman would take relics out of the relic quarry and uh, Marinus Kalker was not too happy with this in fact he thought it was blasphemy but it was his Primarch doing it so he's like, he was stuck in that this little conundrum of you shouldn't do that, that's sacred war gear but at the same time he's like this is my Primarch. I shouldn't be. Ugh. So it looks like Gilliman's actually just taking things out and just going, yeah, we can make a whole bunch of these. Which is good because it's about time. And so we had the um, the ones that strictly guarded um, strictly guarded um, Marinus Collager, and now we have the ones that strictly guard anybody. And it's kind of cool that they're called Blade Guard Veterans. So these are to replace your Sturm Guard veterans uh, or your Vanguard veterans because they can be kitted out the same way. Um, but they don't have a jump pack. I wish they had jump packs. I want more jump packs. But I understand the reason for them not having jump packs because then you have to buy transports and the transports have to get to battle and it's a bit more balanced. But at the same time, I like jump packs and I like moving fast towards my opponents. So yeah. Wielding Mastercrafted Power Swords, Storm Shields, and Heavy Bolt Pistols. Um, I do wish that you can swap out some of that gear, like Thunder Hammer, Power Fist, Lightning Claw would be kind of cool here. Power Maul, Power Axe. Um, I would always take the Storm Shield. I love the Storm Shield. But for the Heavy Bolt Pistol, it'd be kind of cool if you can get a Volkite Pistol, or maybe a Plasma Pistol, or an Inferno Pistol. Just options, spitballing ideas. I don't like this guy. He's too handsy. I'll stop. Anyway, uh, so it's a new ancient, new type of ancient. Uh, Space Marine Battle Standard, all right. Wing Angel on a stink kind on of a pole. Um, the Battle Guard Ancient is a higher. 
carrying an overtop banner, relic, da 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 da. Just kind of. Um, but even without any obvious weapons, we'll reckon he'll be pretty handy in a fight. Pretty, pretty handy. They made a hand joke too. Oh my god, I am terrible. I am making the same puns before I even read them. Uh, so I'm assuming he boosts attacks. Now these guys I really, really, really like. Um, I love the Malta rifle look. I'm hoping we get a plas- well, we actually do have the plasma rifle. We have the hell blasters. So it would make sense that they have a Melta rifle. So I'm assuming it's going to have like 18 inch range or maybe even 20 inch range or because I doubt it's going to have 24 inch range of a multi melta. I do find it amusing how they carry it is similar to that have how the sisters carry the multi meltas. I just I love it. Give these weapons to the sisters of battle, please. Also, it's kind of cool to see more representation with darker skin in the 41st millennium. I do like that. Um, in before one loser YouTuber loses his goddamn mind over this. The Assault Intercessor Squads. Now, this is something that everyone wanted, but I didn't really see the point of. Um, I'll be honest, I'm getting them because I absolutely want Assault Intercessors, but I still think Shooty is just a bit better, uh, especially being that you can give them the Stalker Rifle, and the Stalker Rifle just seems better because you still get the number of attacks plus the ranged weapons. This only gives you a chain sword, which is plus one extra attack. So your normal guy is going to get five attacks each on the Assault Doctrine, which is really cool, but ultimately I like... I, no, I'm not going to lie. I, I really, 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 really like these guys. They look so badass. But at the same time, from a strategic standpoint, I'm like, it's better to just shoot your opponent. But these guys can also run up to your, to your objectives, but at the same time you want... Assault Marines or bikers to do that. So I'm I'm a little bit juggling where these guys are going to fit in my army. So it's like, because we have the Phobos guys. And the Phobos guys do the same thing. Except they don't have the heavy bolt pistol, I guess. I think they do, actually. But they have the combat blade, which gives them plus one attack, which means they're identical, except they start nine inches away from the enemy, which means they're better. But they're also an elite choice and not a troop choice. Now you have a troop choice that does it. So I don't know where I stand with these guys. They're cool, but I don't know if I truly love them yet. I'm not, I'm not feeling them just yet, but I do want to get them because I want to paint these guys up because they look incredible. So does that make sense? I feel like that makes sense. I feel like I made sense. I didn't make sense, did I? Maybe I didn't make sense. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. My chair is slightly sinking. Same. Okay. Moving on. Uh, can these guys actually switch weapons? Raven guys is the intercessors. Da, 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 da. Chain swords for guaranteed carnage. We can be. Okay. So we did get to see these guys a little while ago. And I really thought that this was going to be a weapon across his chest. But it's actually just the handles. These look like the bikes from Akira or No More Heroes. Um, which I really, really, really like. But it looks like they just have chain swords and auto bolt rifles. Which is really good, but eh. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. The chainsaw and the Outriders are effective. It's cool that they called the Outriders again because that's what they were called in 30k. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see, a pair of bolt rifles in the front. It'd be kind of neat if they can get a pair of stalker bolt rifles. I think that would be cool, but a little bit silly. But I would totally be up for it. Um. The bikes also carry heavy bolt pistols and Astartes chain swords. It's interesting that they call them Astartes chain swords here. Hmm. So they all have chain swords, it looks like? Which is pretty good? Or just one of them? Hmm. Yeah. So next up, we see the reimagining of the Necrons. And I gotta say, the Necrons are kind of blowing me away with how cool they are. Like, they are definitely, like, badass. So, let's take a look at these. We have awakened to a galaxy blinded by absurd empires. I love this. Now we oh, so cool. 
It's so All badass. The king has returned. Now, it's interesting because the Silent King has shown that he will work with the Imperium and has shown that he is willing to work with lesser races or lesser races in his opinion. So it's interesting to, to see this because he views the greatest threat to the galaxy as the Tyranids. So I'm interested to see what their point is right now. Because they're redoing the entirety of the Necron lore, again, because it's a new edition, we have to retcon the Necrons. That's kind of been the thing since 3rd edition. Every other edition you retcon the Necrons. Everybody knows this. It looks like he skipped leg day, but overall, I love this guy. He looks... Like, the Overlord actually looks cool. He needs a cape. Um, I'm gonna give him a cape. He needs a cape. He's got his dual disc ready. He is ready. Like, he's ready to throw down. And then we have the Royal Warden, which is badass in my opinion. Uh, if an overlord, that's you, needs a job done right, it's time to call in the Royal Wardens to keep things on track. As well as being a reliable blah 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 blah, the Wardens are tough as nails and armed with relic gauze blasters. So even they're putting the relic things on everything. It's, it's kind of weird. Does that mean that it was a relic prior to them becoming relics themselves? Like, okay, how does that work? So, were these relics prior to them becoming Necrons? Because by the relic logic, they would all be relics regardless of how old they were because they're 60 million years old. So, I'm curious about this. I'm going to assume that they were relics prior to them becoming relics. Even better, he's got his foot up on a rock. <laughs> and he looks heroic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Even he has, it, like, a butt cape. I love it. So, the relic gauze blaster. Interesting. Interesting. So, definitely making them more zombie-esque. And they're giving them a lot more damage to their bodies and everything. It almost looks like the reanimation protocols isn't now perfect, so the Necrons are probably just trying to fix as much as they can uh, instead of fixing everything. The Plasmancer. He ain't got no legs. He stands on mechadendrites or noodles. This guy I'm just going to call the Oodle of Noodle. Okay? So the Oodle of Noodles are a mysterious class of Cryptac, also known as the Harbingers of Destruction. Okay, that's kind of neat. The Oodles of Noodles is a master of the art of weaponized, uh, weaponizing the hyper-technology of the Necrons. Now it's hyper-technology. Like, you thought it was regular technology? No, they poured monster energy on that. That boomer juice got them going. Now it's hyper-technology of the Necrons. And the Plasmatic Lancer, it's... Plasmic Lance. It's bears. It's bears. What? Okay, I'm confused. Um, super deadly in every distance. Also, yes. So, they're deadly at close combat and deadly at range. Neato. And then we got the... Oh my god, I'm gonna butcher these names. Cryoptic Thralls? I think that's what that's supposed to say. It's a jet engine with arm and, arms and legs. It's literally somebody put a jet engine on their legs with Tyranid arms. And that's what we got. I love them. They they kind of look like scary chickens. They do look, they look like kind of like chickens. Like this would be their wing. Like it would come out. I don't know. They look like jet engine chickens. Um, expendable bodyguards at first glance. As it happens. Formidable adversaries especially. Blah, 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 blah. When fighting alongside the... Uh, Plasmancer or any other cryptic, for that matter, the cryoptic thralls will serve as their sword, as their sword and shield. I must said sworn shield. Uh, so they're another type of bodyguard unit, but for these guys, so these guys are bodyguards for the lords now instead of the lich guard, which is kind of neat. And these guys are more bodyguards for these guys. It makes sense because in Egyptian mythology, they did have multiple types of guard to guard royal uh, royal um, agents. 
uh, what, what were they called? What were they called? They were called, um, oh my God, I know this and it's drawing, I'm drawing a blank. Okay. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Corpeth? Scorpeth? Lord? I don't know, this dude did not skip leg day. In fact, he went extra. He has an extra bike. Or that's something else. And he's really proud of it. He's got a big ass gun in one hand, a big ass axe in the other hand, and a big ass hand in the other hand. Wait, does he have a hand in his hand? Or is that just his hand is big ass? Yeah, we're gonna go with big ass hand. The final boss of the awesome Warhammer cinematic trailer. The, I don't know how to pronounce that. Like, Scorpeth? I don't know how they want you to pronounce that. The Lord of Death Incarnate for anyone who dares faces it in battle. I like how they say it in battle, so they're no longer gendering the Necrons, which is kind of cool. Looks like the looks like the Primaris si Sergeant and Battle Sister are in for a fight. Um, blah 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 blah. What do we have? The Destroyer can unleash a searing fury. Annihilation at range. Reap anyone in its path with devastating hyperphase harvester. A hyperphase harvester. Hmm. It's not a phase, mom. It's a hyperphase. Or use its fenchling claw. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's got a claw, a hyperphase harvester, which I guess is this thing. And then it has its, uh, its weapon. It's gone. I kind of wish that he had like a fancy face thing, like, cause like the Cryptech has a fancy face and those guys have fancy faces. But like, I kind of want him to have a fancy hat. Why doesn't he get a fancy hat? Everybody else has a fancy hat. Well, these guys don't, well, kind of do. This guy definitely has a fancy hat. Look at that ring around his hat. That's a hat. This is a hat. These guys are collecting hats now. Well, I guess he does technically have a hat. He needs a hat. I'm gonna put a cowboy hat on him. Now, these things are incredible. Like, they just look ridiculously cool. I'm not a fan of the color scheme that they chose for these new Necrons. I understand why they went with this, but I do like the classic silver. But I might paint mine up to be like red and no, I always choose red and black. I always choose red and black. You know what? I'm going to go with a royal blue for them. I think that would be really cool. And just work the edges down to a really dark blue. So that could be that could be pretty badass. I'm definitely getting these guys. This thing looks like a straight up bionicle. I'm sorry. That thing's a bionicle. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's get forward into combat to murder their prey. Rather than gunning them down from afar... Uh, da, 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 butcher their way through anything in their path with their twin blades called hyperphage thrashers or their enormous two-handed version the soon-to-be rightly feared hyperphage reap blade wow if you took away one letter that would be hilarious it would also be very offensive plasmacite plasmacite I get it, it's a parasite that also is plasma-based, apparently. Also, I love the little shy spiders. They're adorable. This thing's cool as hell looking. I like it. Uh... Plasma site. Oh, it's sorry. Oh, excuse me. Okay. The plasma site's ability to infuse the destroyers... Oh, so it's like a banner bearer for them. Okay, that makes sense. So it's kind of like how we have ancients and uh, banners and all sorts of other flags and everything. This is their equivalent of that. Infuse the ability of the destroyers, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so it looks like, um, it looks like it just, it's a boost to everything around it. And then you got this war of the worlds looking monster over here. I love this thing. I actually love this thing. It kind of reminds me of a... Uh, uh, if you guys have ever seen the, uh, like, water bug, the thing that skims on top of the water, actually stand up, they look incredible and look spooky as hell, and that's what this thing reminds me of. Either that or some kind of, like, weird giraffe that doesn't have a long neck but it has long legs. 
I don't know. I have no idea what I'm talking about. This thing looks cool. What is it called? Uh, synaptic reanimator. Okay, so I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that it beams reanimation juice all over people. Um, no, it's not an armored one. Walking jellyfish. I didn't think jellyfish, to be honest. I didn't think jellyfish at all. I thought bug. I, I was really thinking like a bug. It's far scarier. The limbs uh, support platforms, dubbing the. No, we'll keep your machine legions in the fight against the. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it's a reanimation beacon. Uh, oh, it's got a laser. Everything needs lasers. There needs to be more laser weapons in 40k anyway. Okay, and then we have the synaptic scarab swarms. These are brand new. They look pretty good. They look a lot better than the old scarabs, which were a nightmare. This thing is cool as hell. I really like that. And then we got the warriors. The warriors definitely look way more like pirates. I'm not going to lie. They kind of look like pirates. I don't know what it is. They just... They remind me of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean when you see that scene where they're all walking underground with their weapons drawn. That's what they remind me of for no reason. I don't have a reason for this. That's what they just remind me of. Especially the one with the monocle. Like, that's just a pirate. I'm sorry, that's a pirate. And then we have the 9th edition core rulebook, which is kind of cool. Wait, is it actually a rulebook? Essential lore guide for the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, as well as being the home of the rules to play the game. So yeah, it is the 9th edition book. They're just not calling it a rule book anymore. I don't know why, but they're not. So yeah, here's the storm of silence with the space marine that just kind of looks like he's annoyed at the Necron and the Necron's telling him like terrible jokes. Like the Necron just keeps standing there making terrible puns and he's just like, please stop. And he's just like, nah, 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 nah. Like, that's what he looks like. That's what he looks like. <laughs> All right, so we get a look at everything that's in the starter kit or this box. I think I'm definitely gonna get this. And we did see some more things recently, which I'm gonna cover in this video because I'm here, so I might as well. Um, person does not look happy. Okay, so let's go to 40K. And I think this was it. Uh, yes. So let's take a look at this. So this is the go-kart that everybody wants me to talk about. It is a go-kart. It, it is definitely a go-kart. They look like they're having fun. This is the replacement for the attack bike as we've seen that they're coming out with a replacement for the land speeder for Primaris Marines in that really blurry for, photo from a couple of months ago. I don't know why it has tail lights up front. It should have those in the back, but it does. I honestly, like, okay, my honest opinion on this, I really like it. It's so gaudy and so stupid looking that I absolutely love it. It's like the Storm Raven. It's terrible in its design, but it's so damn 40K. Like, why don't they have armor? Because they are the armor. Why are they out in the open? Why isn't this thing a grab vehicle? Because, shoo sure face, it has a bird gun on it. It also has two other uh, bolters on it. But it looks so damn silly. I love it. I absolutely love this vehicle. I think it's silly. I love it. And then we have the turret. Um, I'm assuming this thing just drops in like deep strikes and then starts shooting. Heavy open platform fit for the Primaris Space Marines. It's kind of cool that it's two auto cannons. Uh, what, what, did, what do they call this weapon? Uh, the Icarus Auto Cannon or something like that, but it's a twin one, so that's really cool. So I think that's four to eight. I'm gonna say it's six. It's probably four to six auto cannon shots, strength seven, AP minus one, two damage weapons. Um, and again, we get to see the Primaris Tech Marine without actually having a Primaris Tech Marine. Give us a goddamn Primaris Tech Marine, please. Please, I will give you a hug. At least one this big. That much of a hug. And then we got the Destroyer, who's got the thickest thighs in the goddamn galaxy. Holy crap, is this girl walking in like, damn. Also carrying a big-ass gun. Not gonna lie. 
Might be the most attractive Necron. Just saying. Just saying. Girl walks in, monocle on one eye, big ass gun in her hand, thighs that can crush a titan. Hell yeah, I'm interested. Let me get those digits. And then her boyfriend shows up. Big ass giant phallic cannon on top of it, two little tiny phallic cannons underneath it, and kind of looks like a giant spider. I really, 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 really like this vehicle. It is so War of the Worlds, and I absolutely adore it. Like. When I saw War of the Worlds, I'm like, I want that in 40K. And 40K has been taking inspiration from all sorts of other things. Like the Cthulhu mythos is the Tyranids. So it makes sense that they would finally take from War of the Worlds and put it into the Necrons. So I love it. I am all for it. And I'm not saying that they just stole it. It's more of inspired from and made into their own lore, which I love. And then we got the Indominus novel with the Space Marine Captain guy, the Lieutenant that still just looks unhappy with what he's currently doing. He's just disappointed. He's like not angry, not mad, not upset, just disappointed. And then we got a whole bunch of different versions of him, including this silly looking version, which I think looks absolutely horrible. It looks like baby puke green. Not, not the best choice in colors there. I think they could have gone better. Same with the blue. The blue doesn't look like ultramarine blue. I know that's weird to say, it just doesn't, I don't know. See, and then they got to focus on this thing. I'm not going to go too much into that. Uh, let's go back and see if they have anything else that we need to go over in this video. Hmm. War of the Spider, we will talk about once we get more information about it. Um, so it looks like they're keeping a good chunk of the older models, which is good because if they got replaced, they would have cried. Especially being that these models are actually new. Oh, wait a minute. They're not showing the warriors. The old warrior. I mean, I guess they wouldn't. There's no point to them. But I kind of want... I wanted them to remake the... Um, oh my god, what is it called? The flayed ones. Especially being with how cool they are. It's cool to see this guy being torn apart at the molecular level by scarabs. That's badass. The Nightbringer in the background. And the Eldar are desperately trying to fight them off. And it's a, they're invading a craft world, which is even cooler. Okay, and let's continue looking at them. <laughs> this guy who's pointing up there and is like, I think there's Necrons up there. They have the old scarabs right here, and that's kind of neat. Okay. Oh, they do have the Deceiver. Okay. Memphret, Soul of Fury. Let's see. Ten Shard of the Deceiver. So I hope they're actually putting these in here. And, you know, keeping them. I, I really hope there's a shard of all of them. At least the big four. Because the Deceiver, the Outsider, the Void Dragon, and... Um, what the hell is the Grimmer? Nightbringer. Should all be represented in this codex. Okay, at the beginning of the first battle round, before the first turn begins, you can remove the Satan Shard of the Deceiver and up to D3 friendly units from the Necron. Uh, battlefield, yada yada yada, then set them up again so they're more than 12 inches away from any enemy model. If you do so, this unit cannot charge in its first turn. Now what's terrifying of that is it just says D3 friendly Necron units. That means you can actually take a, um, take like the Doom Scythes or take something in that teleports units across the entirety of the board, uh, like a monolith, and just dump off guys in front of your opponent. So, oh, they changed up the death ray. Finally, they needed to do this. Heavy D3, strength 10, AP minus four, D6 damage. Pretty good. And we got the God's Reaper, which is the two weapon right there. So it's rapid fire one, strength five, AP minus two, one damage. That's actually kind of scary. Like an entire squad of that would be terrifying. Although most armies do ignore the AP minus two, but it's still strength five. So it would deal quite a bit of damage. So we have to keep this in mind when we go through the Necrons. I'm actually quite excited to start my Necron Force now. So with that, that is everything that I wanted to cover today. I'm going to be getting into it more and more as we progress and as I get to record more videos. So I want to thank everybody for watching this video. I want to thank everybody for continuing to support the channel, especially during this move and everything that happened. It's been a nightmare, but now it's better. 
So thank you to everybody. Thank you to everybody who supports me on Discord, uh, Discord, Patreon. Patreon goes a long way to support the channel. It's keeping me going, especially now that I don't have a job. Um, yeah. So yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you for supporting the channel. As always, I'm Narn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.